What is going down, YouTube Town? It's your homeboy, Captain Retro, and we are here to go over pin side, user rated top 10 pinball machines as of 12 15 2020. Uh, this list changes a lot, it's all based on user ratings, and we're just going to count them down from the top 10 to 1. Number 10 is Deadpool, released in August of 2018, designed by George Gomez and released by Stern. This game has it all. Drop targets, ball locks, crazy bobblehead toys, a giant katana blade that's also a ball lock for the multi-ball, different missions, modes, it's insane. I love this game so hard, I'm trying to find one right now for under 5 grand. It's it's not easy. Uh, I've been looking for about three months now. There's got to be somebody out there that's sick of it, uh, you know, and wants to sell it to me. I don't, I don't, don't think I'm gonna find one for that price. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous game. Look at that artwork. Absolutely beautiful. Coming in hot at number nine is Twilight Zone, a wide body pinball machine manufactured by Bally in 1993 and designed by Pat Lawler. Uh, the game is often noted as being the game with the most patents. However, Pinball Magic by Capcom has more. The most toys and the most over cost budget in the history of pinball. There's four flippers, a life-size gumball machine that locks balls inside, a mechanical clock with rotating arms, a mini play field with invisible magnet flippers, and a ceramic ball that is not affected by the game's two stock magnets. Uh, it's very, very popular. It's going to cost you a lot. The cheapest I've seen in recent times is about 6500 bucks to anywhere over $10,000 depending on how clean and nice it is. It's a terrific game and highly, highly sought after. Number 8 is Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast. Formed in 1975, Iron Maiden led the wave of British heavy metal music and became a global institution. Over the course of 40 years, the band has come to embody a spirit of fearless creative independence, ferocious dedication to fans, and a cheerful indifference to critics. Uh, that doesn't matter. What does matter is this game is incredibly good. Awesome shots. Just shot after shot after shot of great stuff. From the pro model all the way up to the LE, there's something very cool on each game. Uh, the models include 12 Iron Maiden songs with players going to battle as Eddie with the help of four flippers, two spinners, a set of three bank drop targets, metal and wire form ramps, a captive ball mech, a dual up post lock mechanism, and a center bullseye target. The art package by Zombie Yeti is astounding and incredible and just you just gotta look at that game. All right, coming in at number seven, Elvira's House of Horrors. Elvira has had three pinball machines designed after her image and likeness. Uh, this is the third and the best one of them all so far, I think. It contains all kinds of different toys, a lot of long shots. Everything is up at the top of the play field. The game looks gorgeous. It has a trunk lock that opens to capture the ball. The house has a spinning turret. There's four jumping gargoyle stand-up targets, a three-stage family crypt ball lock. The game is uh, goofy and spooky and has awesome old movie clips and stuff playing. And obviously, it's got Elvira and her big old boobies right there in your face, worth every penny. Released in December of 1995 and coming in at number 6 is Attack from Mars, designed by Brian Eddy and released by Bally. This game kind of has it all. Uh, awesome shots, great theme, really good music and callouts, fun, fun, fun. Four different multi-ball types. Uh, there's not a whole lot on the play field, but what there is is awesome. It's all perfect shots, easy to make, easy to replicate. Uh, easy to keep the ball alive in multi-ball and basically shoot that middle spaceship, kill the Martians, save the country. Attack from Mars and its brother Medieval Madness are always highly rated uh, and that there's a good reason because it's an awesome f***ing game. I mean, that's, that's what's up. Awesome game. Number five is another George Gomez game released in July of 1998 by Williams. It is Monster Bash. The point of this game is to get all the Universal Monsters together and throw a big party with their band. Frankenstein on the keyboards, the Wolfman on drums. Uh, look at there, Dracula's got a guitar. The, the Bride of Frankenstein is the lead singer. This game is incredibly cool. Uh, lots of fun shots, a, a moving Dracula target that comes out, a couple different multi-balls, bash away at Frankenstein. Th this is showing you uh, the re-release from Chicago Coin, and they've got a couple new light features on it, but otherwise it's the same game. Always highly rated, always sought after. Probably another seven to $10,000 game if you find the right one in the good, in the good condition that you want one in. Uh, you might get one cheaper, but it's, it's probably beat to hell. 
Number four is Pirates of the Caribbean by Jersey Jack Pinball, not Pirates of the Caribbean by Stern. Uh, this game is incredible, a super wide body. There's a giant rotating ship on the top right area of the play field that has flippers on it, and you can bash the ball around that. You can also shoot a ball from that side of that ship to the other side of the play field with a cannon shot. Uh, there's a chest ball lock. There's all kind of things. There's like 4,000 modes on this game. All kind of toys, all kind of shots, magnets, ball saves. Uh, it's just this game has everything. They uh, only produced a very limited quantity of them, and they were like ten thousand dollars brand new, and they're only going up. I, I've seen them fifteen, twenty. Uh, it's crazy. What an incredible game. Too bad there's only so many of them. Number three is Jurassic Park by Stern, released in July of 2019, designed by Keith Elwin. Uh, and released by Stern this game another one that has so many toys so many things going on if you get the uh, premium or the LE the uh, the dinosaur up top moves his head back and forth and spits the ball out at you it's there's all kind of stuff going on in this game it's way 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 involved uh, I have only played it a handful of times and I really I, I barely did anything look at the the T-Rex spit the ball the helicopter blade goes spin in there's a raptor a raptor cage ball lock uh, a mini multi ball modes just all kind of stuff stuff. Dennis Nedry's in the game. I mean, Nedry's here. We've got Nedry. Not to mention the use of the score by John Williams. I mean, it's just an incredible pinball game. Go find one. Go play it right now. At number two, and because it's pretty new on the list and it was getting a lot of ratings at the time, is Avengers The Infinity Quest, released in September 2020, designed by Keith Elwin and made by Stern. Uh, this game has a lot of stuff going on too, and I've yet to actually play one. All three models released include an interactive Doctor Strange spinning kinetic sling ring disc with dual direction velocity detection. Wow! Aiding players on their journey to opening portals and starting Infinity Gem quests. Uh, all models feature a gravity-defying Avengers Tower magnetic lock ramp with gravitational very target and magnet hold, capturing pinballs in midair as players unlock Iron Man multiball. In addition to distinct hand-drawn artwork, all models feature an Avengers computer bingo grid, three target drop bank, a Thor captive ball, Hulk spinning target, custom intricate wire form ramps, and three full-size slippers. How can you go wrong? Uh, this game's uh, kind of new, so it's getting a lot of uh, early praise. It probably won't stay on the list this high, at least right away, uh, once more reviews come in. And sitting atop the throne, retaining its spot as it normally does, is Medieval Madness. Released in March of 1997, designed by Brian Eddy and released by Williams, this game has it all. It is consistently in the top spot on the pin side ratings due to the simple fact that it is possibly the greatest pinball machine ever made. Uh, there's a giant castle with a gate. You gotta knock the gate down, get the ball inside the castle, blow the castle up, and take over that lord until you get all of them collected, and then you can go after the king. The game is incredible. You can save the peasants. You can save the damsel in distress from the dragon. You can shoot catapult balls at the castle walls. I, there's trolls that pop up. This game has it all, like literally has it all. Multi-ball modes and different mission modes and staggered mission modes and just incredible gameplay. Incredible artwork, incredible call-outs. You'll even hear Tina Fey's voice in it. This game has it all, and there's a reason it's number one. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode of the Top 10 Pinside Pinball Machines as of 12-15-2020. We're going to do one of these like once a month and see how the numbers change. Like, comment, subscribe down below. You guys have a great freaking day. Hooray! Hey, Captain Retro, it's Captain Retro.